Hello and welcome to episode 10 of this YouTube series. It's called Being Effective with Upnote. My name's Chris Wood and I run Effective Faith. Now, this episode of the YouTube series is called Building an Effective Productivity System. The series is moving on now from the sort of basic tutorial of Upnote as we're looking at the, the whole system that I use. You see, Upnode is a fantastic application. I love it, but it cannot do everything. And in order to get things done, uh, I have a system which I call my COPE system. Now, full disclosure here, uh, it is based on Carl Pauline's COD system. That's the, the core of it, as you'll see. But I came up with the COPE acronym myself. Now, I have since found at least two other people who use the same acronym, one who covers exactly the same steps um, as I do in my system, but he uses engage rather than execute for the for the E. Now, I didn't see these until uh, last week and a couple of weeks ago, but I've been using this system for about a year. So now I'm going to walk you through my COPE system and how Upnode is the hub. And as you can see here, this is Upnode. Upnode, uh, I'm going to walk you through some of the ways in which I use that, but this is where I do all of my planning and note taking. It's sort of like the hub of this second brain, if you will. Uh, I use Todoist here as my task manager. I've got a few sort of saved filters there. And then I use Carl Pauline's time sector system, um, which I'll give you a brief overview of in a second. I use Google for my uh, calendar. At the moment, I've just got sort of Apple calendar um, on my Mac. Um, and I use Cron on on Windows uh, for my calendar. I use Notion for sort of managing projects and, um, uh, and managing content. I am trying to move away from that, but that's what I'm using at the moment. Uh, and then I have other tools that are sort of highly specific in their purpose. So for example, I use, um, let's just go back here, I use Apple Spotlight uh, for, for this kind of thing. And I use an app that's very similar on Windows called Flow Launcher. Um, I use Toggle to track my time. I use this app here called Diarum, which is like a journaling app. And then I, as I've showed you previously, I use Raindrop as sort of my read later and bookmark app. So those are the tools that I use primarily here. But this system, this COPE system that I have, it's not tool dependent. I could switch apps if I wanted to. I don't want to because switching apps is a really bad idea but I could do and, and I could still operate the system. As I said, it's based on Carl Pauline's COD system, which is collect, organize, and do. Uh, I've adapted it to COPE, which is collect, organize, plan, and execute. Now over the, the course of the next uh, few weeks, months maybe, uh, I'll put out videos on every single aspect of this system and how I do things in detail. But for now, it's just a very brief overview of what I do. So you need a way to make a note of everything that comes your way from multiple sources throughout the day, throughout the week, throughout your whole life, at any time of day or night. This could be tasks, this could be ideas, notes, information, events, things that are happening or coming up. They could come from emails, they could be things that you read or watch on TV, they could be on the side of a bus that goes past as you're walking down the street, people you bump into. Things are going to be coming at you all the time from various different sources. Now, your ideal means of collection, of capturing all of these different things, should be with you all of the time. It should be there with you day or night. It should be fast. It should be frictionless as possible. And I would say also, ideally, you want to keep the number of places you have to an absolute minimum if you can. So I've got th uh, three main ways of capturing and collecting different tasks. Firstly, I have this, which is a sort of a little uh, notebook wallet thing that I carry around with me uh, with a pen. I also have that uh, by my bedside overnight because I don't necessarily want to have my phone with me overnight. And that is one of the main ways in which I capture stuff as I'm going around through the day. Now, obviously, I also have a digital means of capture, and this is probably the one that I use most frequently whilst I'm working or at my desk. Now, um, my task manager Todoist has an inbox where I can put tasks in and Upnote has a sort of an uncategorized section where notes can go. I've got a simple widget on my phone for both Todoist and Upnote to, to sort of quickly enter tasks and notes on the go. 
so I can write stuff down without being distracted by lots and lots of other stuff. I also use the keyboard shortcut so for Todoist I can bring up this little box and add a task that way whilst I'm working and for Upnote it is I think that there we go yeah and that brings up the box for Upnote. There are a few other things that I use for capturing stuff into my system and which you'll see as the series goes on but for now I'm just gonna leave it there. Now once you have all of that stuff in your system somewhere you need to organize it somehow now I'm not gonna say that much about this here uh, just the bare basics you can't operate with a long endless list of tasks or notes or events that are just completely unsorted that's just totally unsuitable completely unsustainable and unworkable so you need four things really you need a calendar or a diary for your events. You need a note system of some kind for ideas and notes and things. You need a to-do list of some kind and you need a place to keep documents and files that you have and records. And how, how you organize those different things is the subject of uh, much ink has been spilled over this, much tape is on the cutting room floor or whatever you want to call it. You can find literally hundreds of thousands of videos and posts all about how to organize your system. In large part that's up to you and what's going to work for you. But for both of these things, for tasks and notes, I'm in implementing systems that I've learned from Carl Pauline. So I use the time sector system that you saw in Todoist for my task manager and I use his GAPRA system for my notes and my note taking tool which is Upnote. And so for my task system, which is Todoist, I organize my tasks as Carl does by when I'm planning to do them in these time sectors. So I have this week, next week, this month, next month, this term and future. I have a separate project for all of my routine tasks that sort of recur every day, every week, every month, every year. Uh, and a few other things down here as well. That project's one, you can ignore that. I don't actually use that anymore. It's just still there. And then in addition to that, I have a few sort of saved filters for my objectives for today, uh, my focus for today. Uh, I'll explain what these are in a future episode, what my core work is, and then a few things for tomorrow and this week. Now, one of the beauties of this system is it means if I add a new task, this is a new task. It would help if I could spell. Um, it's really easy to just organize it and say, all right, I want to do this this week. Notes, uh, I have those, uh, if I go into Upnote and come out this way, uh, I have those organised in these different uh, sort of main notebooks, if you will. So I've got a planning notebook, I've got a goals notebook, I've got a, a notebook for my areas of focus, for my projects that I'm working on, for all kinds of resources, uh, and then a basic archive. And then this one here is where all of my content is. Now once you have, have everything organized in your system, everything is in the right place, you move on to the next step, planning. Personally I think this is absolutely key, this is why I've gone for sort of the COPE acronym rather than, than simply COD, because I think planning and thinking through and making choices is such a key step, it sort of deserves its own letter in the word. Once everything is organized you need a plan. Now Personally, I'm not going to use my to-do list to sort of plan out my day and manage my time. So most of my tasks don't have timestamps for the day. There are a couple that are time dependent. I also, I don't entirely use my calendar to plan my day as well. Now there's a very uh, good reason for this. I like my calendar to be kept clean and tidy and for only things that I, that actually must happen at those specific times to be on my calendar things I have to be at, things I have to do at a certain time or in a certain place, or things that I have myself committed to doing at a certain time. Beyond that, there's going to be plenty of time in the day that I, I want to use well, but if everything is on my calendar, I'm just not going to use it. So I, I don't schedule all of my plan for the day on my calendar, and you'll see what I do in a moment. When it comes to planning, uh, I I plan my year, I plan my quarter or my term, depending on what word you want to use. I plan months, I plan weeks, and I plan days to greater and lesser degrees of focus and detail as you go through. 
Now, the reason why this is a key step, planning enables you to establish priority and it enables you to ensure that you're being proactive with your use of time. The problem with many approaches is that, from my perspective, they tend to value everything the same and you miss out on this key step of deciding what's important and thinking through how much time something needs and how much time you're prepared to give to it. So I do this planning through a series of checklists, really, uh, in UpNote, which I'm going to show you now. Annual planning, that's incredibly high level. Uh, I don't really have a specific checklist for this. It's a separate process, which I'll show you in a later video. This is focused primarily on goals for the year, uh, larger projects, uh, as well as big events that might be happening through the year that I need to make sure that I'm sort of well prepared and ready for. So that tends to be the focus of my annual planning. When it comes to quarterly planning, I, I have this very simple checklist that I run through here to come up with my sort of plan for the quarter. I'll go through that um, in more detail in a later episode. Monthly planning. Uh, I tend to go through this little checklist. I have a quick review to make sure I'm up to date on everything and go through uh, my goals, my projects, my areas of focus, um, time sectors and checking the calendar for the months ahead. And then I set up a new month planning sheet. I'll show you one of those uh, in just a moment. And then I think through the, the following here. This is where I get much more specific. So if I come back down here to the demo, I've got a demo month planner here. I would just maximize this. So this is the monthly planning sheet. I have some space for reflection where I write some reflections on the past month, things to consider as I approach the next month. And then here, a summary statement, something that I've concluded from last month or just want to keep clear on for next month. And that's collapsible. Then I have my focus for the month. Now, if you saw my previous video where I went through the command hub, you'll have seen these things before they're laid out a bit differently here but you can just copy and paste them copy and paste them from here into the command hub so i have different things to focus on for the month and some work focus things there again that is um collapsible uh i'm not going to open this one because it's a bit more personal but i think through some things to do with my family for the month ahead and then i think about projects and goals for the month so the areas that i would like to focus on for the month these are some examples of what might be in there. Some goals for the month, again, just examples of what might want to be in there. And then I have a list of projects, which are sort of links to notes or notebooks within UpNote um, for the projects for the month. And then this list of projects is pretty much what informs this week by week focus. So I kind of map out um, what projects I'm going to work on in each week and I would flag up important dates in there as well and then I have a carryover for uh, as I work through the month things that I decide not to do uh, when I approach the week that I can then pull into this carryover for when I plan the, the next month. That would be my monthly planning sheet and I would refer to that week to week as I go through. Uh, my weekly review and planning would be this one. Again it's just a simple checklist to run through uh, getting clear, so making sure all of my inboxes are empty. Getting current, which is basically just going through my calendar for the last week and the next week, figuring out where I'm up to on the monthly plan that you just saw, seeing where projects and things are at, and working out if uh, new projects need to be started or resumed. Um, and then I get focused, updating my command hub, deciding what I'm going to focus on, putting all of the tasks in the right time sector, in Todoist, especially the this week one. Just going through this list really, and then getting committed. I, I just go through some things to, to actually plan what I'm gonna focus my time on through the week on my calendar for the really, really important stuff. And that's how I do my weekly planning. Then my daily planning, I have this sort of end of the day planning, which I do it as, as it says on the end of every day. So I check my uncompleted tasks for the day. If there are any, I go through my notebook if I've made any notes. Where it says choose two plus eight for tomorrow, um, I tend to have two objective tasks uh, each day and then eight other focus tasks. And then I'll just go through my calendar and do some journaling. And then each day begins with a quorum deo, 
which is a, a little checklist that I go through. I'll have a whole video on this uh, later on. So that's basically how I do my planning through the, the years, the quarters, the months, the weeks and the days. And then once you have a plan, all that's left to do is to execute that plan. Do the work, effectively. Do the work, as, as Carl Pauline would say. You follow your plan. You need to be flexible with this, would be my, would be my biggest piece of advice. Because when you make your plan, whether it's for the month or the year or the week or whatever, when you make your plan, you don't have perfect foresight of what's going to happen. You don't have perfect knowledge of what your energy levels are going to be like through the week. And you don't have perfect foresight of what circumstances are going to surprise you. So you need to be flexible. But secondly, you also need to be flexible because you want to allow room to actually serve and help other people as the need arises and not just spend the whole week serving yourself. And because you don't know what other people's situations are necessarily going to be, you need to have a degree of flexibility both built into your plan, but also in your approach to following your plan so you can be available to help and serve others as you need. Now, I use my calendar uh, to show me the fixed essentials for the day. So any meetings or any focus time that I've planned to do and I use my task manager to tell me what to do during the day so some of those tasks will be objectives and others will be planned for the morning others will be planned for the afternoon but the main thing that I use to sort of walk me through the day which I'm going to show you now is my command hub so this would be a demo command hub that you can see now I, I went through this in a recent video so I'm not going to go through it in much detail it's basically just a dashboard. It has those sort of focus and targets uh, from the month planner. That I have there to, as I said previously, just to keep me clear on what's important this in this particular month. So I see each day in the context of the bigger month rather than just sort of bashing around trying to do whatever I can. And then I have something similar for this week. So I have my key reminders, targets, goals or habits that I want to be following this week. And then the key bit is this uh, today bit down here. This will show me the projects that I'm working on today. Again, these are just links um, to the projects themselves. So when it comes time to work on that project, I can just click the link. I would have my three, two or three objectives for the day. These are the tasks that I must get done if all else fails. Uh, then I have a few things to remember. And then here is where I really plan out my day. Now, not everything on here in my agenda for the day, the morning, the afternoon and the evening would make it onto my calendar. For example, I'm not going to put on my calendar that I'm going to watch a film in the evening, nor am I going to make put it on my calendar that I'm going to spend time filing. It's just not significant enough to go on my calendar. But I do want just a basic list that, as I said, walks me through the day. So, you know, if I was recording and publishing my podcast, what's next? What do I do when I'm finished with that? After I've produced a YouTube video, what happens next? What do I do after lunch? Not everything is going to be on my calendar, but it is really useful to have just a list of what you're doing, uh, sort of bang, 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 just to keep you moving through the day. So this is my command hub, and this is basically what in effect governs the execution part of my COPE system. And so there you have it. That's an overview of the system, the, the tools I use, and the way I do things. Now, as the series progresses, I'm going to talk through uh, all of the different ways in which the collection happens, the organizing happens, the planning happens, and the execution happens. I'm going to talk through how I use different tools. Please do subscribe. Please do hit that like button below if you found this valuable. And you can check out some of the other videos that are appearing on the screen, probably here somewhere, I would have thought. And we'll see you next time on the next video. Thank you very much.